Thank you for joining iMeet. When you hear the tone, you will be the 29th person to join the meeting. Hey everybody, good afternoon. This is David Blake with Tuesday Tech Talk. And uh, today we're going to quickly review the last couple of days in the market, kind of figure out what uh, to do next. We'll look at some different indexes. And um, I usually talk, if this is your first time, about 20, 25 minutes, and we open it up to questions. You can ask about individual stocks or the subject matter that we just covered, um, industries, whatever uh, else is on your mind. Okay, today's webinar, we're going to touch on a subject that uh, most of you are probably aware of. I've had a couple emails asking me to talk about it a little bit. Uh, we had done it about a year and a half or two years ago, but um, not all of you, you may not understand uh, how you can profit and hedge your, your portfolio by using uh, some of these trading vehicles. And we're, uh, what we're talking about is trading volatility in the market, in other words, known as the VIX. And um, if you've been coming to the last uh, couple of webinars, it looks to me like we're probably going to be in for a time of some some added volatility here uh, over the next couple of weeks, maybe going out to the end of the year as uh, the market kind of lives and dies by the uh, tax reform headlines. And plus the fact that we're overextended and, um, uh, you know, investors will start to look at whether or not Trump's going to be able to get anything done before the, at the end of his first year or not. So what we're going to do real quick, Hitley, we're going to look at the different indexes. First off, here's the, uh, the Dow Jones, my pointer here. Okay, we have a nice long extended uh, trend line going back over here. Then we had a kind of a melt up that began uh, right around September 1st with all the indexes made, where we made a series of new highs. Um, we ended the week last week down for the first time in about eight weeks, and I think it was the, the first time down in about uh, we'd we had a win streak 12 or 13 we had been up. So uh, pretty powerful market. However, we are finally starting to see some signs that, uh, of negative divergence and, and signs that the, uh, you know, the, the old bulls get a little bit tired. Um, here, this was last melt up. We actually have broken this uh, short-term trend line, which is not as powerful, but it's uh, still something to watch. Uh, the pivot point down here is around 23,092. So we're still about uh, 300 points above where the pivot line is. But however, you can see the MACD has already rolled over into bearish territory. This is a, uh, uh, a negative divergence here on the 14-day RSI, where as we were making a higher high, the indicator did not confirm that. So that's what you look for that uh, signs of topping areas. Um, and also the CTI, as, as, we, as we are in this week, is at a plus six, but we are, we're projected to possibly go to either a neutral or a sell um, at the close on Friday. We'll go over that in just a minute. But the momentum index is now a negative six, that means the Dow Jones is outperforming almost every other index, including uh, the McClellan Oscillator, that type of thing, where you're looking at the accumulation and distribution. Sentiment is a negative minus one. Uh, that's telling us that investors are still too bullish. The spread between the uh, percent of bullish and bearish investment advisors uh, hit 50 last week, and that's the uh, highest level uh, that we've hit since 1987, so we're going back 30 years. 64.5% uh, of the uh, bull, uh, of investment advisors are bullish, and we're down to only 14%, 14.4% of investment advisors are bearish. I mean, that's, you can't find any bears around, so um, we are getting that. That's a contrarian indicator, and when you just have too much bullishness, it's something uh, certainly a red flag to take a look at. So anyway, you also had last week the um, NYSE and NASDAQ AD lines. They lost a little bit of ground. And that's despite the fact that the Dow, the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and the utility index all made a new high last Wednesday. So we'll look at some of the ne negative divergence and the technical indicators on some of these other indexes also, and then we'll get into the, uh, the VIX uh, talking here. All right, here's the NYSC advanced decline line. We've kind of flattened out. Last time we made a new high was back here on October 20th. Um, you know, we, we need to see this thing needs to break out of here. We're, we're going to lose another 1,000 about 800 points today, so it's going to take it down a little bit further around this area. Um, this could actually pull down to about 390, and, and some of these indicators like this, you actually look at uh, you know resistance and support lines also. But 
you know, this is uh, not confirming that we're going to be making new highs. This is considered a, uh, a uh, leading indicator. So we'll keep our eye on that for the next couple of weeks. Now here's the, uh, the new 52-week uh, highs versus new lows. And for the first time in a long time, in fact, since, since August back here, uh, we actually have now had, uh, we're making, we have more new lows than we do new highs. So that's, some, that's another neg sign of negative divergence, which we want to keep our eye on. Uh, that key, that's, that's uh, again, we'll have that again today. I think we only have 80 new highs, and we're, over, we're in triple digits now in the NYSC for new lows. So, you know, these are all signs that uh, you really don't need to be ignoring. You know, when you're having the back and forth uh, uh, over here, it's showing signs of some weakness. You know, you can you can be prepared for it. But now you need to be, start to prepare yourself that we could, uh, you know, have some more selling to what we're actually looking for. Right, here's the S&P 500. You know, still work, it worked way up in this uh, this upward channel. Had a little bit of a throw over here. Now we're coming back into it. Uh, again, the MACD is showing a little bit of negative divergence. We're over overbought. Here's the 14-day RSI. You made a new high over here in uh, October. Made a new high on the index in uh, November. However, that wasn't confirmed by the 14-day RSI. Again, something to take a look at. We're under. Uh, we're down here around 60. Uh, if this thing continues to go down, we'll keep our eye on the 40 level. That's something we want. Uh, it would be support for the broader index. All right, now here's the, here's the NASDAQ. Uh, again, this is probably the strongest looking uh, chart of all of them. Still working its way higher. I really wouldn't call this negative divergence, although you get a, did get a bearish cross on the MACD. Um, as you made a higher high here, you had a little bit of a higher high there. So uh, nothing wrong with the NASDAQ. I think it... Uh, you know, a little bit overbought, but um, it is still the strongest area with the technology that uh, in the market. Now, I want to see some divergence, though. This is the NASDAQ advanced decline line, which made its last high back here uh, around October 20th, but has been steadily moving lower. This, this means that you have less and less participation in the number of stocks that are heading higher while this NASDAQ is, is punching forward. I mean, you, know, you have your Facebooks, your Googles, and all that that have been punching out new highs. Um, it's not being confirmed by the broader market. Again, another red flag and uh, that we want to keep, keep an eye on just, just to make sure we don't give up the profits we made over the last, uh, last, last year, okay? Now here's the uh, NASDAQ with the new high and new lows. The same thing. We're making more new highs or new lows now than new highs. Another red flag. This is, again, negative divergence showing that there's, there's more weakness and we're having a, more of a rollover in stocks that are just, you know, ending up down, you know, down, down at the bottom. All right, so again, we're, just, we're trying to point out the fact that we may want to take, take some defensive action, which we're going to talk about here in just a little bit. Now, here's another red flag. Here's the Russell 2000, and for the first time in, uh, in a while, back here from in the 1st of August, uh, we're having this channel working its way down lower. We crossed the 50-day moving average, red flag. You can see the indicators all confirming this weakness. Um, we're basically in an intermediate term trend line. Now, the reason I pointed this, this here out, um, as you know, we go to, go to a negative CTI um, uh, probably, probably at the end of this week. It could be a neutral. But last <laughs> August, uh, or last July, I believe last July 27th, we went to a negative CTI there. Now, we didn't have much of a correction or pullback in the Dow and the S&P 500. But this is what happened to the uh, Russell 2000 and also the uh, Dow Jones Transports. It, it, they corrected around, uh, you know, seven percent during that period because of the passive uh, investing that, that's going on with the ETFs and the uh, you know, QQQs and the SPX and DIA. You did not get the selling, uh, the individual selling in those indexes. But you can see it was a time period of, uh, of, of a rather weak market, despite the fact that the uh, big indexes just kind of went sideways. And you can also see that divergence in the uh, advanced decline line. So I think if, if, if we do pick up selling, uh, you can see this area back here is kind of support, but was resistance for the Russell 2000. That would basically bring us down to around the 100-day moving average. If we break this uh, 14, uh, let me see, if we break this 1460 area, I think we, we'll probably go down here around this 1442 area. That's the 100-day moving average on the Russell 2000. I would... I think we're probably going to hit that. We're just we're just trying to hang on to this the 40 level in the 14-day RSI. If it breaks below that 40 level, that will that will confirm that we're in a uh, intermediate uh, downtrend. And also, you're just breaking the uh, 20 
mark on the 30-day stochastic, which also will confirm that. Okay, another uh, red flag here. Now we have the Dow Jones transports, which um, this is an even bigger problem. But we're trading below the 50, we're trading below the 100, and the next step here is uh, the 200-day uh, uh, moving average down here at 93.90, and today right now we're at 94.95. So um, I, I would expect to see that come down here and test that area, see if we can hold that. Otherwise, we might get a, a drop down here to see if we can uh, find support down around 9100. Again, you get this, this, this move down is confirmed by the different indicators. Um, remember, here's the 14-day RSI. We're already trading down here around 30. Uh, once that breaks 40, that's basically indicating that the down, that the, you're, in a, you're in a downward trend right there. And until this thing can get back up above the 60 level, um, you probably have lower prices in, in store. And here's also, you can see the advanced decline line on this. It's already showing uh, signs of deterioration, too. So last chart I'm going to pull up before we go into the VIX stuff. Here's the semiconductors. It just uh, way overextended. Um, no negative divergence. It just keeps rolling. Um, however, it's, it's when when you get something this overbought, it could be the most susceptible to a quick pullback. Not that uh, you, you're going to give up all the money, but just it's so overextended that uh, if the other ones re, uh, pull back about three or four percent, which is all I'm looking for, uh, you could get a eight to ten percent on the semiconductors if they really start to you know want to lock in in profits. So. Anyway, um, you know, technology is still one area I think you can uh, be buying on pullbacks, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, you know, not giving back any of the profits that we've made here over the last thing. And what, what we want to do on these talks, you know, we, you know, we've had some pretty good luck uh, on, on some of these calls going up, what sectors to be in, and when you, when you have a period where, you, uh, uh, where it looks like we could have a period of four to six weeks of a weaker market, you just want to uh, have some things where you put some puts in. Say if you have a stock that you're up, it's gone from 20 to 28. Uh, you certainly don't want to th see the thing come all the way back down to 23 or 24 uh, over a two or three week period, and then kind of go sideways until you can make that money again. So what, when we get to periods like this, it, it's it's, uh, it's prudent to maybe buy some puts. I don't necessarily like uh, selling covered calls in times like this because then you're stuck holding the position. So you can buy some puts. Or you can also uh, to protect your profit, or you can also uh, uh, you know play the VIX, which we're going to talk about. And on these puts right now, if you're going to protect yourself, you know maybe you buy a dollar worth of protection, uh, take a dollar out of your profits. Uh, go, I would go out to January, and that would give us get us through the end of the, the holidays. And if we do get a big big sell off, you can actually take that uh, you know sell those puts, and, and if it goes down four or five bucks, you've locked you've locked in your profit, and you still have your stock. So. Uh, that's what we're trying to do is just to make sure you hold on to what you have at this stage. All right, best performing sectors for the one week, um, all defensive. Consumer staples up 2.5%, REITs up over 2%, and utilities up uh, 1.29. Um, you know, again, we have, uh, the institutional money is moving into uh, getting more defensive in here uh, towards the end of the year. That's not usually the case. Uh, worst performing sectors, basically everything else led by energy, um, which is a little bit surprising. We're actually uh, down again today. Um, you have OPEC nations saying demand's picking up. We keep getting the EIA uh, petroleum status report saying that demand is, is down. Now we're, we're um, you know, once we cross that 55 level, which we, we've talked about several times, uh, we thought we could get a trade up to 60. We got to 59 and change. Now we're back down here testing this 55, 52 level which uh, we want to watch, because if it breaks below there, the next support is 52. Um, not all these oil stocks, uh, they had a little bit of a little bit of a bounce, but they're starting to give it up pretty quick. And, um, you know, we, we st I, st I still think that uh, there may be some upside room in that, but um, we'll just keep our eye on those levels on, on crude oil. All right, here's this, this crazy chart we're going to look at. All right, this is the VIX, which stands for the Volatility Index. Um, and what this measures, the VIX is a sentiment indicator. Um, it measures stress or how anxious traders are about the market. Um, it could be caused by uh, an economic catalyst, a political catalyst, environmental catalyst. It doesn't matter. But something that whoever's moving the moving the market, this is going to uh, you know it, it, it measures. Uh, it's calculated by by comparison, uh, comparing to puts and calls on the S and P 500. So. Um, you know, these things start to, start to roll, start getting more puts. Everyone thinks the market's going down, you get a big spike up. 
If everybody thinks the market's going higher, you'll get, a, you'll get the uh, work it down this, this way. So low VIX, you know, the traders are complacent. That uh, usually happens with market tops. I should have overlaid the uh, S&P 500 on this. But, um, you know, if, if you, usually historically, you're going to be pretty good trading this thing between 12 on the downside, maybe 20 on the upside. When it gets over there, you're probably looking to take profits and, and go the other way on it. Now, this year, we've actually gotten down uh, to below nine, which is, was, is an all-time low on that. Uh, some traders even wonder whether this thing still works, but I like to give it this. This is a fairly, you know, historically, this is a pretty sh uh, short time frame to say something doesn't work. So um, at this stage, I, we're going to look at some indicators and all on this, but this, here's back last uh, August, um, wait, not last, uh, August 2015. We had a pretty good good spill at that thing. You saw this thing go from about uh, 12 all the way up to, uh, I believe, something like 65. So these things are very volatile. They're not for the uh, weak of heart. Uh, you can get swings of 50% in the day. Uh, last Friday, I think we were, it, you know, jumped up about 11%. Today, it's up about 3.5%. But um, when you trade these things, that they're, they're tr you trade these purely on technicals. There's no fundamentals involved. It's all just supply and demand. Bring a price determined by the market, and uh, it'll be close to the actual VIX value. Uh, but we're talking about some other, some other ETFs and other ways you can trade this. All right, how can I trade the market volatility? There's, there's several different ways on this. Um, and I don't recommend all of these unless you're almost a hedge fund manager. But you can trade VIX futures, which are contracts that go out about nine months. They trade at a significant premium. And as you, uh, you know, most people don't want to look at the market going out that long for volatility. And, in fact, and there's always going to be, if you look at these uh, VIX futures charts, uh, if you're looking at a chart, it's going from the top down to the bottom at a 45 degree angle. That's because of the premium that's involved in them. As the uh, market goes on, uh, the, the, the trades are, are going to adjust. The way the market works, it means it usually has an upward bias, which means that the, the bias on VIX futures will also be taking out the premium and going lower. Okay, you can also buy VIX options, which are, uh, these are options on the futures, not just the VIX itself. So, uh, you know, the VIX could be, the VIX could go up 8%, the VIX futures might go up 15%. You, uh, you basically have to have a, uh, uh, a machine in there with a quote, quote, on right in front of you if you're going to be trading these things. The way I, I would do it, and the way I have done it, is uh, you can trade VIX-related ETFs. These are exchange-traded funds. They also have uh, ETPs, they call them, which are exchange-traded products, all right? And then you can also, if you really want to get nuts, you can play the uh, VIX-related options on the ETFs. <laughs> Let's just say I, I, I'm looking at the VIX trading between 9 and 11, and I think it's going to 15, so I'm going to buy the uh, December uh, VIX 15s. Uh, you, can, you can trade them that way to try to get more leverage uh, to what you're trying to do. All right. One of the ways, uh, one of the ETFs that you can trade on this thing, this is called the VXX, all right? This is a short term, uh, it, again, it's based off the future, so it's not going to be a trade at 11. And this is a daily, this is going back about uh, six months. This is a, a, just a daily bar chart. You can draw in trend lines. As you can see here, we have a trend line going down, which we just broke above. You can see the MACD is going bullish on this. Uh, we have a double bottom on this. Uh, we have the um, uh, we, we have a, a double bottom test. This is called positive divergence, where if you uh, you make a bottom over here, then you come down, test that bottom. However, the relative strength or momentum doesn't go down or uh, stays higher. That's a, that's it's called positive divergence. That means you're probably the stock you know you're probably going to get a higher bounce off of this. Uh, now, if you had a lower uh, negative divergence on that, that went lower in the momentum. That would be a negative. But in this case, if you come down and test the bottom, you want to see the RSI or stochastic something uh, stay up higher. All right, now this is the accumulation distribution on the v on the VIX ETF coming all the way down. But you'll, you'll see this thing start to you know right now they're still selling this all the way down. They're not you're not you're having a lot of buyers. I mean, why would you buy it? You're having a melt up during this period, even though the market was overbought. You don't really jump ahead of the the market. I mean that's that's jumping in front of a freight train. You, you go ahead and you kind of wait till the market begins to show cracks before you go into this because most of these trades are going to be, you know, two, three, four, five days. You don't buy this thing and figure, 
Okay, the market's got to correct between now and March. I'll just hold on to it. So you'll buy it at 20 and it'll be about $3 by the time uh, March gets here. All right, here's another uh, uh, something that's a little bit um, more daring. This is a, they have, this is a UVXY. Uh, this is a ProShares Ultra VIX, which gives you double the return. And th these are the big moves you get in here. Now, here's back here in August when we started to have a little bit of a blip. Um, you know, in the market, we started to roll over. We, you know, we kind of had a bearish call on this thing. Okay, we, we spiked from 30 all the way up here to uh, around 47. Pretty good move. Then we did, and then you got up to here. You started working your way back. Draw a trend line in here. You can see right now we're also starting to work. So if you get a 10%, ideally, if you get a 10% move into VIX, which at nine isn't much, you know, it goes up uh, what 10, 15 cents. You're going to get a 10% move or, uh, in that thing. So we're at the process right now where this double thing looks like it could be breaking out to the upside. You have uh, positive divergence on the MACD. Again, you have this double bottom over here. But guess what? you got the positive divergence in the 14-day RSI, which is a, a bullish sign. You also have a flattening out here of the accumulation distribution, which if you start to see this thing moving up and on the, and the smart charts and on uh, market edge, you want to look for the 50-day up-down slope and you want to see that the slope is moving up. So this is UVXY uh, if, you're, if you're so inclined to get a little bit more aggressive. All right, now this is just, uh, this is the regular VIX. This is the VIX that you see in the marketplace daily when you come in here. This is uh, just going back six months. You can you draw a trend line in here. Um, you, here's the, where we're getting down in here into the eights. You can see that that test is, tested it once over here, almost there again, and down here. Um, you look at the indicators, we're starting to break above this little area here. This is the uh, uh, pivot point, it was up here around 1080. That means, there are, uh, yeah, 1080. So what they're looking at on the, on the floor of the different traders, uh, as long as this VIC is above 1080, they're looking, and of course resistance is up here at 12, 12, 1265 where we hit yesterday, they're looking to go long the VICs. In other words, they think the volatility is going to go up and uh, we'll stay as long as, the, as long as we're below the pivot, uh, they're going to still stay uh, you know, short or they're not going to buy it. But anyway, so this is telling you if we get above, above 1250, you're probably going to get a trade up here. The next this is up to the 1492. Um, and as, as we saw on the other chart, I mean, you could get a run up to, to 25 or 30. Usually over 20, you start thinking about coming out and going the other way because it's going to uh, you know, uh, re revert uh, to the to regression there. To, come down back to the middle. But again, we're starting to see uh, momentum starting to pick up on this trade. MACD is bullish. Um, we also, you know, the, also got the 30-day stochastic, which is uh, your first sign that we may be starting a good trend upward, um, showing you signs that it may be a good time in here to, uh, you know, just to start uh, looking to play some of these. All right, here's another one. This is the uh, this is the reason, reason I put the, this. This is, this is the uh, VI or XIV, and this is an inverse um, VIX trade. And then it's the VIX going. The VIX is going to go uh, up. This is going to go down. The reason I brought this up is, is occasionally, with, if, if you go back to watch this uh, uh, webinar later, and you write down these these ETF uh, symbols, go and look at a chart, and that way you're going to look at different time periods and uh, for hints that things are changing. Yeah, you may not see something on the uh, six-month chart or the uh, uh, you know, using the regular moving averages, but you may see something on a 10-day chart with a different, uh, you know, you may look at the VIXY and see that, okay, I, I can see a definite change in that. I don't really see it in the VIXM, but I do see it in the VXX. So if you look at different uh, 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 products that are trading the same thing, if you can, if you look at say seven or eight of them, you're, you're getting a pretty good idea. Five of them are, are telling you that, okay, we are getting a change in, in trend here. That that's just going to confirm to you that you're on, you're on the right track, and you can get. It. So here, this is this inverse thing. Uh, again, you're seeing this. They're buying this, which means uh, you know uh, that they're starting to move out on this thing. And here you have the negative divergence on this where. The VIX came down here, you know, towards to where it was going towards the eights again, and now we're rolling over, and you have negative divergence. This didn't confirm that this was going higher. All right, so the VIX-related ETFs that you may want to write down, and this is what I was just talking about, where if you look at several of these to get confirmation from the other ones over, because again, you're, some of those, some of them are double double moves, some of them are the short-term futures, some are the mid-term futures. Um, 
you, know, you can look at these things to, just to see if they're confirming each other. But write these down. And again, these are diff just different ways to play this um, to, to give you, uh, you know, to, to, to play the volatility. Now, this is something called these are trade triggers. Um, if you're wondering, okay, well, if, just without looking at the chart, are there ways that I can, uh, you know, conf confirm myself based on the technical indicators that, that, that I need to get in? Uh, this case, um, and we'll go back, go back and forth on some of these. You might get the VIX uh, or, or the ETF crossing above or below a short-term moving average. Um, when, when, I, when I look at VIX trades, uh, the, the, you look at basically the five-day moving average or the 10-day moving average, possibly the 21-day moving average, but I think that's, that's, even that's too slow for what you're trying to do because these are trades that you're going to go into for, you know, max four or five days tops, okay? So maybe um, uh, if you if you want to be conservative on this because it, it could, could turn a, turn a on a dime and basically wipe you out almost in one day, maybe you wait till the uh, the long VIX uh, it goes 10% above the 10-day moving average. If you want to go short the VIX or you're looking uh, you think it's going lower, you wait until it goes 10% below the 10-day moving average that way. You can use a five-day RSI rather than the 14-day. Um, again, the 14-day RSI is probably going to be too long. You can almost use the one day. I think that's a little bit too too long. But you know where we see the overbought and oversold uh, points on the 14-day RSI, like here. Okay, over here, we're, yeah, this is the 14-day RSI. We see something really overbought, okay, and it was I mean, when you when you sold that, you went from uh, 17 all the way down to uh, eight. But on a five-day, you're going to be overbought, you know, over over in here, and you, you know, you'll just get you in and out much quicker. And what you're trying to do, okay? Um, your five-day RSI go long. Wait until the RSI crosses back above 30. If you're going to go short, you know, wait, wait till the five-day RSI comes back below 70, 75, somewhere that area, and that's going to give you a, a short-term uh, trade that will conf you can confirm it that uh, you're probably going in the right direction. Okay, another thing that we you can look at, um, you you also you want to look at convergence and divergence on. Uh, on these trades too, as you're going in, you get a rising VIX, and and the uh, uh, the, the S&P 500, and Nasdaq 100 are, are both uh, going up. Okay, this is a rising VIX in that case is bearish divergence. That could predict that we're uh, having a correction. Okay, right now we're kind of we're, the market's pulling back, but if we were still making new highs and and the VIX was still going up at the same time, that would be your bearish divergence, which means the traders are getting a little bit more nervous about this trade. You get a rising VIX. But you're getting a falling S and P. Um, that bearish, that's bearish convergence, which raises the odds for the short-term sell-off. In other words, that, that, in that case, the uh, rising VIX is confirming that the uh, S and P 500 and Nasdaq are getting uh, uh, weaker. Okay, the falling VIX plus the falling S and P 500 uh, and Nasdaq. You can look at the bullish divergence. Uh, you can look at the uh, high probability the market is bottomed. In other words, um, okay. The, the, the S and P 500 are going down. The VIX went way up. Now the VIX is starting to go, starting to come down. Went went up to 20. You know the S and P is down 40 points, but the VIX is going from 20 down to about 18 or 17. All right, that means the traders are thinking this is probably overdone, um, and that that means they'll be coming in to buy it. That will be a bullish divergence, which means you can go in there and and uh, you know begin shorting the VIX, hoping it's going to go back down to 10. Or so, even though the market's going uh, going lower. On the same aspect, you get a falling VIX and, and a rising S and P 500 Nasdaq, and you get the bullish convergence, which means that uh, it's confirming that the short-term trend is up, and you're probably going to you, you can probably get higher prices on that, and you just stay with that trade. Uh, some of this is kind of con uh, you know, confusing. You know, what's the bearish divergence and bearish convergence? Um, you know, it's just the bearish divergence means that you're go it's going the opposite way. Various convergences, you're confirming your the move with the with the VIX. All right, just uh, you can go and get your questions out here right now. I'm going to go just uh, go to the CTI real quickly. Again, we're projected to go uh, either neutral or bearish this week uh, on Friday. Uh, we'll see what the momentum indicator is. Uh, sentiment, sentiment probably is going to stay uh, negative again, but um, if the momentum index is we, we we're at minus six last week, unless it goes up to a, a plus two or you know, minus two, something like that, 
where we're seeing a big move in, up in the um, AD line or the, uh, uh, you know, some of the other indexes, but the Dow underperforms, uh, will, it most likely will be a sell in the market. Um, that would be your, your time to go into some of the, uh, the triple leveraged uh, seat, uh, ETFs that we've done. Uh, this year, you're, uh, you're, you're going along with, with the market pretty much because we had a bad call in January and February we, where the market went up 800 points and we were, we were out of it. But uh, we've, we've caught up with it since then. And if, if we do get this pullback now, that'll put those triple leveraged uh, seat, uh, ETFs back in the plus column uh, for, for this year. And uh, last year, if you followed it, we were up about 60% on that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and look at some questions on here and see what we got. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to put them on here, or you can email me later at dblake at marketedge.com, or you can go to support at marketedge.com. All right, Linda says, when there's a pullback in U.S. markets, is there historically a corollary pullback in forward markets? Is the question developed in our emerging? Um, it, de it depends. Um, generally, uh, we're not, we're not, the U.S. isn't going to pull back 4 or 5% and everything else go up. Um, you know, they don't necessarily have to go down 4 or 5% also, but you will see weakness. And we're, we're still the, uh, you know, the big bull on the, on the, on the, on the, on the street, so uh, they're going to follow us. Uh, and also, if you would see, like, say, the dollar, U.S. dollar uh, you know, pull back, that would, be, that would be a sign on, on our weakness that maybe uh, when we do settle, that would, might be a chance to buy oversold emerging markets in that, in that case. But I, would, I wouldn't just, you know, just because I feel we're going to go down, I, I wouldn't go out and short uh, Spain or, uh, or something like that. In fact, on our, some of our portfolios, we go with, uh, um, we look at, uh, 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 you know, we, we stay fully, fully invested on the, on the emerging and, and developed markets uh, all the time on that. Hey, Will, we, we can be a top uh, folder in that, in that drawer. Okay, um, any other questions in here? I, we did make a couple uh, additions to our, the portfolios, which I'm going to give you in just a second. Uh, hold, on, hold on one second. And, that, and with the CTI going negative, we won't be adding any positions in the portfolios. However, we added uh, in the value uh, portfolio, we sold EXPO, uh, 71 and change for about a 3% gain. We bought... CCMP, Charlie, Charlie, Mary, Paul. Uh, the price was 97.14 on that. The small cap and the aggressive growth, we bought LGIH. Uh, on Monday, it was a 63.15. Uh, we sold uh, Callaway Golf for small profit, ELY. We also sold out of uh, e MEOH in the growth and income. And we bought LB, limited brands. LB, which is a uh, nice dividend stock if you're looking for dividends and growth. Uh, that went into the growth and income. And that was basically it. Well, in the emerging market, we sold out of ECH, Chile, and we bought EWS, which is Singapore. Anyway, I don't see any more questions coming up. Um, again, get back to me because there's a lot of stuff on here. You may want to look at this once or twice uh, so you can write down these different symbols. Uh, I, I, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your um, your busy day to uh, join me uh, for this. I hope you got something out of it, and I hope I can make you some money. I will talk to you next week.